Welcome to this Tech Talk on remote water monitoring. Our speaker today is Mike Hayes from Intuit. Mike spent 15 years in ag services and in the ag industries prior to his life at Intuit. He focuses most of his energy on communication equipment for remote networks and the implementation of monitoring and automation systems supported by this network. We welcome Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Odie, for the opportunity to talk. Um, and um, I suppose for, for us, any opportunity to uh, uh, give people an insight into not just what our business does, but also what other stuff's available out there that people may not be aware of. Who we are, we're a little <clears throat> little business based in the southeast of South Australia, down at Narracourt, um, but cover well, pretty much all of South Australia and anywhere else people wish us to go. Um, and our, the main the main drive of our business is, is to fill the gaps where the bigger players don't operate. Um, I.e., there's no point us going to uh, do stuff in a, in Mount Gambier or Adelaide or anywhere like that because they have a multitude of ways to connect and distances aren't normally a, an issue for them. So whether it be our telemetry work or internet related um, uh, gear, it's really about filling gaps that most people are aware causes some issues in, in regional South Australia. Um, myself and my brother, um, Dan's been probably doing it for about three years longer than me. Um, I've been going for about seven or eight years um, and um, along with our staff in other parts of what we do. Um, keeps us all busy, I can assure you of that. So to get the presentation underway, the big questions first. Um, just so you don't have to wait until the end, um, what does it cost? Um, I normally try and cover this first, and that's largely because it's people will in, inadvertently all sit there and go, well, that's all great, but how much is it going to cost me? So really, if you're doing um, our type of network, um, we do other types which go through telephone, um, you know, through a Telstra and Optus network or um, satellite and those types of things, but it doesn't really operate in the core of what we're trying to achieve, which we'll go through a bit later on. So essentially, if you had um, 10 water points, one repeater and a homestead, it'd give you 12 locations. And it's about three, three and a half to four grand per location. So it's gonna be about 36 to 48 grand to do that type of setup. Um, and the economics of that really comes back to um, labor replacement and how quickly you can get a return. And I'm sure plenty of people have seen calculations of driving around time saved and all those sort of things. Um, each farm's different, everyone, um, everyone has the opportunity to do those calculations on their own. So for us, um, um, it's, a, it's not, a, uh, um, not a situation where it's cheap, but it needs to be cost effective. So our system is based on the pre the types of systems that we install um, based on, a pre on the premise that when things go bad, you don't want to be getting any bills, i.e. If you've had to destock and you've had to shut things down, then you don't want a situation where you're going to have to continue to pay for monitoring or for automation when you've got no livestock there, or if you don't have any crops in the ground. So what do you actually get for your money? You don't get any monthly charges, you don't get any internal internet costs, and you don't get any internet flows. It'll all, all of our equipment works internally um, so that you have your own network, and that's how you get around all the ongoing costs. Plus, it doesn't put any limits on what you want to be able to do on it. That's entirely up to you. Where we really do differ is that on, if you own your own network or a type of network that we put in, you don't have any bandwidth limitations for that price. I.e., uh, we have plenty of networks that will have five cameras on them, and on the same type of networks, we can run 150 cameras. No extra cost per month, no extra equipment required, it's just what you decide to put on. Standard type for us <coughs> um, in those examples I was just showing is um, where you do have a camera on a trough and a camera on the tank. So the, the reason for the variation in pricing between three and a half and four grand um, is what you decide to put on, whether you wish to have two cameras or three cameras or four cameras or whether you want to have Wi-Fi calling from a tank or whatnot, and we'll cover all that a bit. In more in depth a bit later on. Um, and that was what I just discussed. Um, motivation. <clears throat> Why do people install this type of technology? Essentially, we're in the labour replacement industry. 
it's a funny thing where we can go around and, oh, we do it for this reason, we do it for that reason. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that really like to have a situation where you have another couple of people on farm to help you out. But there's one reason that we don't, and that's because labour's expensive and coupled with hard to get. So really in terms of all of the things with monitoring and automation is because in today's world, it's, it's difficult to afford to have full-time staff on farm um, and therefore we're looking for ways to not have the people on farm but and to be able to do it more cost, the same jobs more cost effectively, i.e. water monitoring. So option A, we pay an employee to check a tank that 95% of the time didn't need any checking. Yep, tanks full, drive along. Yep, tanks full, drive to the next one. Yep, tanks full, drive to the next one. Or option B, check the same tank and 100 others yourself while at Adelaide Oval and at the Bradman Bar. Believe it or not, that's actually a true example. We do have people that do go to the cricket along with myself um, and keep an eye on things while they're away. Also, if you happen to have a uh, holiday anywhere else around the place, you can still achieve the same thing. Um, where it all started for us, um, <clears throat> six years ago, it's probably more like seven years ago now, um, now I think about it. Um, we're a minute, which is about 60 k's west of Pimba. Um, the owner, Sam Ingalls, is my brother's wife's first cousin and they were at Christmas, uh, Christmas dinner um, in Clare. They were talking about it and trying to come up with a way to try and stop all this driving around and paying people to drive around to do the same job. There's got to be a better way. So my brother did say that... Hang on, I've got a phone call that I thought was on... on uh, what do you call it? Aeroplane mode? <laughs> That's right. Oh, I thought it was on aeroplane mode, but obviously not. I did it two or three times, and when we had to do those file transfers, <laughs> I No, you're right. <coughs> just start right. again here, like start that section about where it all started. Yep, just go from there. Yep. Uh, so where it all started for us was um, with Wira Minna, my brother Dan that I work with, his wife, Kathy's. Um, she's from the mid-north, from Yakka, and they were sitting in Clare at Christmas dinner, and... Uh, Sam, who's Cass' first cousin, said, oh, you know, up, we're a minute driving around, checking tanks. There's got to be a better way than this. So my brother, I come and said, oh, that's all right. I'll, I'll get my contact. He'll know how to do it. So I got bobbed in for the, for the first job. Um, pretty much that remains unchanged to this day. The, the original design and equipment that went in has pretty much remained unchanged. Um, with one camera on a tank, one camera on a trough, they do have uh, traps rather than conventional mustering for cattle. Um, and since then, there has been, uh, I think we've got one, one, two, three, four pumps that get started, um, along with a few other things that have been added on. These are the types of projects that we get asked to tackle. This is for uh, Moola Watner, just up on the Streslecky track. Um, and people ask us to do some things which on the surface seem to be um, not necessarily unachievable, but a little bit more difficult, required a bit more thought. And that was to have a system that would cover the whole property and that it'd be able to monitor waters, monitor stock, rain, keep in contact, contact with others, being able to make phone calls, and send texts. The next bullet point there where I've highlighted where it's, that it was upgradable so that in three or four years' time when, when equipment became redundant, that it'd be easy enough for it to be, and cheap enough for it to be upgraded. That it was easy to maintain, i.e. Mean, not having to wait from wait for someone to drive all the way from from Adelaide or Melbourne or fly down from Brisbane or somewhere to fix it, that they'd be able to do it themselves and that there wasn't any ongoing fees. Um, I said, yep, yeah, that's all fine. Uh, leave it with me. So I thought about it for a couple of days and came up with a couple of ideas and um, yeah, it went from there. So um, all the one has been going for a couple of years now um, and we did actually achieve all of those things. Um, the types of coverage, a lot of people go, well, that's all great, but I've got, I've got a very large property or a remote property or whatever else. Um, this is a map of Billicolino, which is halfway between Rocky Downs and Cooper Pedy. <coughs> um, you can see the farm sizes on towards the top of the maps. Um, and yeah, we've successfully um, covered all of those little water points that Cole um, circled for me um, and a few others since then. So the area and distances is not, is not a problem for us. Um, you know, it does add costs, there's a little bit more work, but 
Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you're trying to trying to limit the labour and limit the driving um, as much as possible, and this is one one way to do it. So, why do we use this type of technology? <coughs> um, or how do we select the type of technology that we use? We try and use the same technology that you have at home. And the reason for that is that it uses the same technology that drives the internet. The same way that we're able to do this webinar is the same type of technology, computer technology, internet technology that we use around the world. It provides one platform for anything that is networkable, i.e. it doesn't matter whether it's a printer, if it's a computer screen, if it's a laptop, if it's a phone, that all of those things will work on these networks. And what it does is really allows us to move into the realm of um, mass produced type products so that the price of the stuff becomes uh, achievable. A lot of the types of things that we'll talk about a bit later on have been done in mining for, for 15 years, but where they were paying $30,000 to do a job, we're trying to do it for three. Um, so using open source equipment um, is an important part of how we design our things. And once we've got all those things placed, that it, it does actually provide a road for agriculture um, to move forward because it is the same type of technology as the rest of the internet. And as I've spoken about, that it does help you keep the price down dramatically um, and also the availability of equipment. This is the interface that we use um, for one of one of the solutions that we have. This is a, one of the camera networks. Um, you'll see on the right hand side that um, you can click on each individual camera and look at it um, from a live view point of view or on the right hand point of view, right hand side where in the menu down the left hand side where it says live view, you can put eight or 10 or 15, 20 cameras to look at simultaneously. You can put a lot more cameras, it just becomes quite small on your computer screen. There's also a phone app um, that you can run with this. Um, and from there, depends what else you want out on, pump start, um, those types of things. Um, as I said, all our components are available as open source. Um, we don't like being tied in, same as anyone else. I.e., if you see something really cool on eBay and you think, yeah, that's really gonna suit my, what I wanna do, you can leave it, as long as you can connect it with a blue computer cable or with, with Wi-Fi, it'll, it'll work. And what that allows us to do is use lots of products from lots of different suppliers to achieve the endpoint. And most of those parts, once we've got the network in, um, are between one to two hundred dollars. The little radio that sits up the top that's capable of talking forty kilometres or further, um, they're one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Little computer switch that um, everything gets plugged to, into inside the box, they're about one hundred and Forty-five dollars, something like that. Last time I looked, um, the system runs on twelve volt. It's a twelve volt, twelve to eighteen volt solar panel, and if need be, you can drive up to the Land Cruiser and put the jumper leads on it. It'll go. There's nothing um, um, expensive in in each individual component. I.e., if at all, um, someone leaves a handbrake off a Land Cruiser and it goes careering down the hill and crashes into one then um, you only got to replace each individual component and not actually the $3,000 again. Um, why, do we, why do we do cameras, not sensors? It's not that we don't do sensors, it's just what we believe as a sensor is a way to give a feedback loop. And with a camera, you can actually see what's going on. Seeing is believing. You can't get a false positive in this situation. You can't get a situation where salt builds up around one of the sensors or sensor gets jammed or bird creates bird nest on the sensor because you'll see all of those things going on. As you can see, and this is the water flowing into, the, into a tank. Um, our type of networks, you control what's going on and it lets us operate where you normally cannot. So this here was, was myself driving out of uh, Billicalina. Um, we've been up in the rocket range. Um, yes, we were actually allowed to be in there. Uh, we're on our way out. They were just trying to prevent anyone else going in. But we can actually operate where the others can't. Where Telstra can't, Optus can't. And in some situation where NBN can't, um, i.e. you can't get a, an NBN connection 
stuck on the water tank out in the middle of nowhere. Um, there are some of the other people that provide telemetry equipment, FarmBot, EcoSat, those types of people, um, and they do operate um, in areas where we can't, but under those regimes, it, it operates against that philosophy of what we have, which is no ongoing costs. Um, and that for us, we don't care how what sort of bandwidth people want to pull through. If you want to pull 100 cameras through live feed, well, that's right, we'll pull 100 cameras through live feed. The only <clears throat> ongoing cost would be if you wanted to um, go on a 12 month annual annual leave and you wanted to use all of your internet to try and pull a camera, 100 cameras feeds through to Fiji. Unlikely to happen, I would suggest. What do the internal networks provide? Uh, it's a multi-purpose platform. Um, for anything that's internet enabled. As long as you can plug a blue computer cord into it or you can use Wi-Fi, it'll work on this network. It's live access, it's not a pulse, it's not a um, every 15 minutes. If you decide you want to start a pump, you click the button, the pump will start. Um, there's no monthly SIM cards required, there's no licenses. Uh, no monthly support charges. You can repair and replace equipment yourself um, with guidance. Generally, when we set the networks up, we get people to help us so that they learn how the network operates and how to do maintenance and troubleshooting themselves. And as we just discussed, that the average replacement of hardware is about two hundred dollars per component. Um, the investment in the network is not just limited to the one purpose, and that's an important difference. Um, people were probably reasonably familiar with types of automation in, in not just agriculture but in other industries. Um, there's just a few of the um, other things that we've been asked to automate in the last couple of years. Um, the, this following pump is one that's uh, an hour and a half round trip from the homestead at uh, Kuna. Um, the pump used to, well, has to be started every day over summer and runs for about eight or ten hours. Um, Unfortunately, in the past, so once you once you left the pump, there was no real way to know that it, that it was running. So this is the interface that we use for starting, stopping, and, and running the, the pump itself. Um, just a simple click on the buttons on the right hand side. Um, you can run the click the run button, click the stop button, or you can run it for twelve hours. Um, so when you use the run twelve hours button, the pump will run auto autonomously. I.e., if you lost an internet connection, or sorry, if you lost a network connection or you didn't have access to it or whatever, it'll look after itself. The controller's actually at the pump. Um, and then the start motor is, is the crank. So this is actually the motor itself. Um, so what you'll see in the middle of the screen there is the little uh, linear actuator, or be quick, because it will start to pull in. And then you'll see a pigeon that starts to come down from the right hand side. Um, we'll see that as uh, Mr. Rock Health and Safety just uh, checking out, make sure everything's okay, and then the motor will start. And what you'll see um, shortly is once the motor has started, that that actuator just below the fuel tank um, pushes in and it will push it back out, sorry, and then the motor will stop. Um, these pumps as I've just described, um, can be started and stopped from phone, computer, anywhere, anytime. Not only that, once you leave the site, you actually can check in at any point in time and check on that pump to make sure it's still running, hasn't run out of diesel, hasn't had some vermin get tangled in the belts and run the belts off, and then you can actually click on the tank and make sure that the tank does have water running into it. So there's also um, an example here of, of some other types of scenarios. Um, where we have live cameras in tanks, water troughs, goat traps, all those types of things. Um, Wi-Fi calling and internet repeaters. Um, on an Optus type sort of system, if people have got Optus sims, um, 80 bucks get you 500 gig. Um, this one here is in the Gawler Ranges. Um, so it's a 30k link and then a couple of k's down to the homestead. Um, broadcast Wi-Fi around the station quarters, um, kids doing schoolwork, those types of things, um, school of the air, and provides all residents with not mobile phone in terms of a Telstra connection, but it does actually allow for Wi-Fi calling. Um, so generally what we do is um, set the same Wi-Fi calling system up at each water tank, 
um, or if you want. If you look high up on top of that mast, you can see a, what looks like a piece of PVC. Um, if you set up car kits, then you can do about a 15 kilometre, a little bit further, maybe 20 kilometre line of sight um, back to those repeaters. Um, and then you can create a Wi-Fi hotspot in your vehicle and then you can use that to use Wi-Fi calling. Um, works quite well. Um, first one I ever made was on a sand unit at Litter. It was quite good fun. It was a bit late in the afternoon um, over a couple of beers because I thought it might actually work and it did. Um, some of those other concepts that we do use um, is a bit of a side point to telemetry, um, but some scale and scope of the gear. This is um, one of our internet networks, or well, our internet networks in the southeast. Um, another part of our business is actually delivering internet into um, uh, people's houses, in, in effectively in competition, MEN and Telstra and Optus. Um, the only real reason for putting this slide up is that we do actually know what we're doing. It's not a fly-by-night thing. Um, and that it's actually backed by some guys that actually do really understand what we do and we've been doing it for a long time. We have a lot of fun doing it. Um, for people in other parts, um, we do actually do some work with Beam out of, out of the Barossa and for people in, in the mid-north that know Goiter Connect, um, some of our, our back-end internet provision um, does actually come out of Adelaide. They're all little side points, but more just to, to um, and give some confidence to people that haven't had a, a word of mouth referral that uh, we do cover a reasonable amount of the state. The Red Meat and Wool Growth Program is an initiative of Primary Industries and Regions South Australia and supported by Meat and Livestock Australia, the South Australian Sheep and Industry Funds and Sheep Connect South Australia.